Welcome, welcome once again to another edition of the Savior's Cross broadcast. Uh, it's good to see each and every one of you tonight. Um, we pray that uh, some of you will tune in, maybe share and like. Uh, we're anxious to get started again, <clears throat> excuse me, in the great book of Galatians. First of all, I want to welcome uh, this uh, wonderful panel uh, that the Lord has put together uh, tonight. I want to welcome uh, to my left, uh, Pastor Jeff Longwell, uh, Preacher James Wassman, uh, to my right, Preacher David McCall, and Preacher Daryl Purser. And uh, I'm Pastor Jeff Williams here uh, at uh, West Franklin Spirit of Life Church. And uh, we're going to be digging back into uh, Roman, excuse me, Galatians chapter number three uh, and pick up uh, in verse one. And pick up uh, in this great, great <clears throat> epistle to the churches uh, that were scattered throughout Galatia. Um, and the theme here in this uh, is obvious. It, it is a great, great uh, defense of the gospel. Uh, to put it in uh, uh, my terms would be a great defense of the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. And um, we're just anxious to look back into it. Uh, maybe you would help us out by sharing this broadcast, uh, maybe telling your friends about it, and uh, uh, just grab your Bible and uh, turn with us to Galatians chapter number 3. And uh, with all that being said, we're going to jump into the Expositor Study Bible, and we will read verses uh, 1 through 5, and we'll just see what the Lord will do from there. Amen? All right, Amen. Brother David. The Word of God <clears throat> reads, O oh, foolish Galatians. Failure to use one's power of perception. Who has bewitched you? A malignant influence. That you should not obey the truth. Refers to Jesus Christ and him crucified. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you. The expositor says here that Paul preached the cross with such vividness that his hearers could see Jesus Christ crucified among them. Regrettably, now only a few modern preachers follow this example. This only what I learned from you. I will convince you of your error by this one argument. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? This refers to being born again, at which time the Spirit of God comes into the heart and life of the new believer. It is received simply by trusting Christ and what He did at the cross. Yes. Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit? The notes say, do you think you can now be brought to a state of spiritual maturity by means of self-effort? Are you now made perfect by the flesh? These Galatians were practicing salvation by faith and sanctification by self, which is also the state of many modern Christians. Indeed. Have you suffered so many things in vain? You have suffered persecution because of your acceptance of Christ. Don't throw it away. If it be yet in vain. In essence saying, I trust it is not in vain. He, the Lord Jesus, therefore who minister to you the Spirit and the works, miracles among you, does he it by the works of the law or by hearing of faith? It is obvious that everything the Lord does is done on the basis of the believer exhibiting faith it is never by works of the law Amen. we'll we'll jump right in right there uh, we can see uh, that the apostle paul is continuing his dissertation to these churches concerning the defense of the gospel and we find ourselves right in the middle here uh, of this of this precious epistle and uh, we, we'll go ahead and start, gentlemen, um, with the first phrase. And we, we're going to notice here right off the bat that uh, the Apostle Paul is using some very, very strong language here to uh, these church folks. And he for, starts off by saying, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not, that ye should not obey the truth? Um, Brother Darrell, would you like to start something uh, commenting there? Yeah, I mean, when you first read this to a new believer maybe, which happened to me 
you, you kind of think Paul's being arrogant, but he's not being arrogant. And what Jesus said, you're not to say raka to your brother, which the Greek word moros, where we get the word moron or empty headed or whatever, he didn't use it in that context. He, in fact, in the Hebrew translation, it says, you stupid Galatians, exclamation point. Uh, sure does. He didn't call them empty headed or nothing. They were just trying to integrate the works of the law into freely given salvation. So Paul had to be harsh. And where you read it a while ago, it's not practiced uh, regularly, regrettably not practiced by preachers today. And when you do in this culture we live in now where everybody's offended, you know, it, it's uh, people don't understand. Therefore, now there is no condemnation. I tell you, I might be harsh like Paul. He, he loved these people. I, anything you do, you do it out of love. That's right. Just like you're correcting your child, you know. And most people misconstrue that because they don't have the uh, discernment of Holy Ghost conviction and satanic condemnation. You, people think you're trying to condemn them or judging them or something. Uh, I'm, the Holy Spirit is good, profitable for doctrine, rebuke, reproof, for teaching. And that's where today you got to be a little more bold, or we have to be a little more bold in our speech. It may sound harsh, and you may even get your feelings hurt. And I'm not going to go there because I, I got my own about touchy, touchy feelings, but <laughs> that's another sermon for another day. But we need to stand firm in the faith and not to compromise. I heard a preacher talking just the other day. He was a president of the Southern Baptist Association for three years. And the liberal side and the conservative side come one day and the liberals told him, said, uh, you need to give, in, give a little bit of something. And he put it like this. He said, I don't have to be the pastor at Bellevue Baptist Church. I'm talking about Dr. Rogers. I don't have to be a, a preacher there. I don't have to, to preach the gospel publicly or anything. He said, but I'd freely give that up before I would compromise the word of God. Amen. Amen. So, yeah. Amen. I want to uh, pull it down to this side of the table. Brother Jeff. Longwell, if I was to ask the question in your mind and, and in your heart from what you see from the scriptures, uh, why, uh, why would Paul use uh, this uh, type of language or why would, I guess we must say that the Holy Spirit yeah. used mm -hmm. uh, this language through the Apostle Paul. Um, I guess my question, what's at stake here? What's at stake is uh, where you put your faith. You know, um, he, I'm getting a little ahead here, but he, he, he asked them, you know, did you begin in the spirit and now you're perfected in the flesh? And, uh, you know, it's all in the same context here. And, and that's just foolishness. And what's going on here is um, just like many Christians today, they've received Christ in faith. They've trusted in uh you know, the, the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, and they put all their hope and their faith in him, and then as they begin to live out the Christian life, they begin to think that they can win God's approval mm. by keeping the law. Indeed. That's right. And uh, what that is, really, um, you know, you might look at that and say, well, you're putting your trust in the law. No, you're really putting your faith and your trust in yourself. Absolutely. And I believe that's why he calls them foolish in... Uh, Proverbs 28, verse 26, it says, He who trusts in his own heart is a fool. Mm -hmm. And it's very clear, uh, you know, when you trust in your own heart, in your own righteousness, in your own uh, keeping of the law or doing things to try and get God to approve of you, you're foolish. It's just foolish. Because it, it, it won't have any effect on how God sees you. You know, if you're truly saved... If you truly receive Christ, God looks at you and sees the righteousness of Christ. Amen. That's right. Amen. He doesn't see your sin anymore. 
He doesn't see who he used to be. He sees the righteousness of his son because we're clothed with the righteousness of Christ. Yes, right. hallelujah. And when we begin to try and think that, you know, we've got to do this and we've got to do that, and maybe if I extend my prayer time a little longer and, and I'm in the word a little bit more and, you know, these good things, you know, I'm paying my tithes, I'm at the church every service, and, you know, I'm, I'm doing all these things. And as Christians in America, well, we fall right into this trap. We're not going to the old Jewish law, but we're... We've got our own law. Right. We've got our own work <laughs> right. that we do. Right. And we think, you know, I'm really spiritual if I'm doing all these things. I see it. No, you're really spiritual if you're putting all of your faith and your hope and your trust in Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. That's Amen. Right. Amen. 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 Brother James? Yes. Um, several things pop out in my mind. Uh, basically, I see here Paul is coming against a uh, man-centered gospel. Amen. You know, it's a prideful gospel. Amen. You know, even Lucifer, you know, up in heaven, sent in heaven, says, I want to be like the most high. I want to do this, and I want to do that. And a lot of I statements. And this is exactly what Paul is coming against. But when I read these passages, I like to put myself, I try to put myself in the situation. I try to put myself in the mind of Paul. So I started out with the very first word in verse 1 is O. Oh. O, oh, foolish Galatians. O oh, here is an interjection. It's mm -hmm. not a verb. It's not a noun. It's an interjection. It's a note of mm. exclamation. Yeah. It, it means, an, uh, an interjection means it expresses spontaneous feeling and emotions rather than meaning. So Paul was very passionate. Yes, oh, he was. foolish Galatians. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I can feel him. I can yeah. see him Indeed. say that. And I feel it. And he's passionate about this. Um, O, the letter O, or the word O, is mentioned 975 times in the King James Bible. Wow. It's something to pay attention to when, you, when we read Scripture. Um, basically, that's, about, that's all I have for that one. Well, that is, I'm really sorry. spoke to my heart, and uh, basically he is coming against a man-centered gospel. We want to pay mm. close attention to what he's saying, and we want to preach a Christ Amen. Amen. And, what, and what the brothers just said lines completely up with with uh, my study uh, because he uses the word foolish. I didn't get the O part, James. That's good. That is, um, that is. Uh, foolish is uh, the Greek on that is anateos, which means stupidity. Brother Darrell said, "Old oh, stupid Galatians is what it says in the Greek. That's indeed what it says because anateos means stupidity arising." from complacency and impotence of intellect, or failure to use one's power of perception. That's what they were doing. And I think Paul's expression of calling them foolish uh, was, was one of surprise, first of all. And secondly, it was one of indignation. He was, he was aggravated. He had poured himself into these folks. He had set this church up. He had built, helped, the, through him, the Holy Spirit had built their foundation. He had set the ball rolling and he put men in place to keep that in order mm. and he leaves and it, it goes to, to craziness because they took their eyes off the cross and there's that's the bottom line they mm -hmm. took their eyes off the cross and you got to keep in mind that in the, in Galatia there was a major blending of several different cultures there too at the time because you had you had Jews there you had Gentiles there you had um, uh, embedded in there, there were w those that had, that were steeped in um, witchcraft. Mm -hmm. They were steeped in um, what people would call traditional beliefs. Beliefs of the family was passed down, passed down. So they had core belief structures that were having to be torn down, and the church was doing that. And then suddenly, all these things get added to the gospel. <laughs> And Paul's saying, are you, you're so foolish. Why are you doing this? And I believe that's why the, it's so exclamatory in, in, in its case. I think that's great. I, I, was, I, I picked up on what Brother Jeff was saying concerning um, how we as believers will drift into a works-based uh, uh, Christian life and really not even realize it. Right. Um, uh, you mentioned the uh, the 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 paying of the tithes and and uh, the maybe extending prayer life and and all of those things are good, right. just like the law of Moses was good. Right. 
uh, the law of Moses, the, the Lord says that it was holy, it was righteous and good. It still is. But, but, and yes, I, it, it still is. And it's not that, it's not that uh, the Lord is against us doing good things. Yeah. Where we go wrong is we, when the good things that we do become the object of our faith. And, and grace flows through faith, uh, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace cannot flow through the righteousness of the law. I'm, I'm, it, grace cannot flow. And um, I, think, I think, and this is my personal opinion, guys, I think the concentration on the book of Galatians is more in a sanctification or progressive sanctification uh, type setting than just nailing it or putting it in the corner of justification. Absolutely, I know that I know that the apostles touching on justification because he mentions having begun in the spirit. But see, uh, we also will see later on that he's talking about uh, the, the the day after, so to speak. I'm uh, I mentioned it a lot of times. We get saved uh, by grace through faith on Sunday morning, and then. Uh, as the expositor's notes say, Monday we start trying to sanctify ourselves, <laughs> and and that cuts off. Uh, it cuts off the flow um, uh, of grace, and it, grace works only uh, in the parameters of my faith in Jesus Christ That's and exactly His right. finished work. Amen. And I need. Uh, I'm I'm not saying that that grace completely stops because it's by grace that. We live and have our being. I'm just saying that the help that I need uh, on a daily basis and the help that these Galatians were going to need on a daily basis, um, Paul says, hey, um, he, he not only called it uh, foolish, uh, he referred to it uh, in the sense of, of a bewitching. Absolutely. And uh, again, this is not the words of, of, of Paul and the natural man. This is the words of Paul in the spirit world. Mm -hmm. And um, that is why it is, I believe it is so critical that, um, uh, that we, even as a church, um, the worldwide body of Christ, that we protect this gospel mm -hmm. to the best of our ability. Mm -hmm. it, I, I know it's not something that we can do, but I, I, it's just as the scripture ends here in verse 1, it says that we should... Uh, not obey the truth. In other words, who hath bewitched you, who, O foolish Galatians, that you should not obey the truth? There's, there can only be one truth. Amen. There's only one truth. And, and Paul is telling them that grace can only flow through this truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. And um, uh, matter of fact, Proverbs 23, 23, it says, buy the truth and sell it not. That's and right. and the, it is a very, very uh, adamant thing here, guys, that uh, Paul is saying in verse number one. Amen. Any other comments on, on verse number one? Well, basically, it's like other scriptures. Jesus preached on it. Paul said to imitate him because he imitated Christ. Other apostles, disciples. <laughs> it's basically self-righteousness. Jesus preached about it. One verse that comes to mind, don't think more highly of yourself than you all. Uh, Jesus warned the, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the, and the Herodians the dangers of self-righteousness. And that's what Paul is more or less here in other scriptures through the Bible is warning. Paul writes in Colossians 1.28, we are to preach with warning. And that's, I believe that's what he's doing here. He's warning them. Why are you doing this? Because I think you get into the latter part, I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves, but even Jesus, he always had the warning. You give the warning, and then you teach with all wisdom, Colossians 1.28. And that's what Paul done. All Scripture, like you said earlier, this was the Spirit speaking through Paul, 2 Timothy 3.16. All Scripture is inspired by God. Right. Or by the Spirit. Amen. So, uh, If there was any other way, and this is not original with me, if there was any other way to deal with fallen humanity 
Christ would not have had to go to the cross. Mm -hmm. right. That is the sole purpose for him, for him coming, not for just our salvation experience, but also our Christian experience. Because the scripture goes on to tell us that we, um, we died with him. We were placed in, in him. And we were, as a matter of fact, Romans chapter 6 says we were baptized or, or submerged into his death. Yes. And if, if all of that was unnecessary and, and I, could just, I could just go along and get along and, and live a life of good works, then what Christ did, uh, as the scripture will say, <laughs> uh, it, profited, it profited nothing if, if Christ, um, if this wasn't essential. So... I think it's. Uh, I think we too, uh, as as men of God and women of God, uh, I'll say it. Lastly, in this, the 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 Bible, the Bible says in First Corinthians one eighteen, and it's a very very familiar verse. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, mm -hmm. but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. And uh, I, I I can. Uh, Brother James, I can hear hear Brother Paul saying, "Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, you know, you know, time out. Uh, we got to get back, and we got to keep the main thing, the main thing." And um, I'm gonna hush after this, I promise. But I believe if today's church, I'm talking about the body of Christ, will go back to this mindset, yes. the power of God will move in the churches. The power of God will move in people's lives. People will be delivered. Things will things that that only the Spirit of God can do. The Spirit of God will have free course and free reign to do in our lives what we need to do. And that goes amen, right amen. back into the bewitching. I mean, what's <laughs> there's things bewitching people today. Yeah. Absolutely. And 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 we're falling prey. If Paul, if the Apostle Paul was standing here right now, he'd say, a whole church of America, what's bewitching? What That's is true. bewitching you? That's true. And I'm mm -hmm. speaking as a whole. I'm not pointing finger at churches. Because Correct. just like in Galatia where they had all these other teachings that were mixed in and these people were trying to, to walk a life of sanctification in Christ, but they had baggage that they were dragging with them. And he's like, what do you got in your bags? Is basically what he's saying. What, what's bewitching you? Get, throw the bags out the window. Let's go back to the cross. Let's talk about that before we, before we move on. I, I wrote in my notes here the word bewitched. It carries the idea to fascinate or to uh, even the, the malign or to speak unpleasant mm -hmm. of. And um, with with the way we are, our human nature, it seems like we're always looking for some new thing. We're always looking for some new philosophy, some new thing that will put us really up a, up a notch on the spiritual ladder. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe that, that Paul somewhat here was saying that that's what some of these uh, Judaizers were doing. And saying, hey, if you really want to be right, if you really want to get close to God, yes. get circumcised. If you really want to, to, to be in the family, if you really want to be children of Abraham, if you really want to know what's going on with, with Moses and, and the law, then start taking uh, the, the sacrifices and, and, well, maybe not sacrifices, but the ceremony. That's the word I'm looking for. And, um, and he was actually, uh, these people were actually bewitching these Galatians, Absolutely. and some of them were falling for it. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I, I totally go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. Um, just what you were saying about, you know, if you want to be more spiritual, if you want to attain a higher spiritual level and, and be closer to God and, and all these things that they're, they're promoting and trying to lead them astray into, back into legalism and back into the law. And uh, it, it's really just the works of the flesh. Exactly. And uh, it just reminded me of uh, Jeremiah chapter 17 
and verse uh, verse 5. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. It's mm. good stuff. Mm -hmm. Because here you are saying, yes. you're, if you do these things, you're going to be more spiritual. You're going to be closer to God. Right. But in reality, if you're putting your, your faith and your, your trust in your own flesh, your heart is departing from the Lord. It's the very opposite. You're wandering it? away from God. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. yeah. Everything, uh, guys, everything back then that pertained to keeping the law, the flesh had to do it. Right. If, if, if it was keeping a ceremony... And, you know, if I had to go, if I had to make my way to the temple, it was something I had to physically do to find favor with God. Right. Uh, circumcision's obvious. Right. It's something that had to be done. Sure. And uh, the keeping of the law or the works of the law and the flesh are synonymous. They, I mean, you can't have one without the other. Right. And they were placing their faith in this. Uh, which was being a very, very detrimental to their walk. Amen. 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 What about uh, the last, the last phrase, guys? In 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 uh, verse number one, it says, "Before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you." Now think about that for a moment. Uh, in the expositor's notes here, we see that that uh, Paul. It, it, the, the notes say Paul preached the mm. cross yes. with such vividness mm -hmm. that his hearers, uh, in essence, could see Jesus Christ crucified among them. Uh, Paul was, was reminding them, don't you remember? Don't you remember uh, how we brought to you? And don't you remember faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God? Don't you remember uh, how that we had brought to you Jesus Christ, uh, that the lamb slain before the foundation of the world? And man, it was, it was good stuff. It was good stuff. And, and that is how they come to know the Lord Jesus Christ and were born again. And um, it, see, we, it seems that he... He is saying, look, guys, as Brother James say, we're going to have to have a time out here. Mm -hmm. We've got to go back to the cross of Christ. Amen. Well, that comment about set forth back during those times, this is Kenneth Wheat's knowledge, not mine, but back during those times when, when any kind of event happened, whether it be in the church or the community, they would set it forth on a placard in the middle of town. So if, if so-and-so's child was getting baptized, they would place a notice. They would set it forth on that placard in town. Mm. And that was how they announced. And what he's saying is, you know, he's been evidently announced mm. in such a public way. It, it's been clear to you. So that's kind of that set forth part. He's been, has he got to be crucified again right in front of you? Basically is what he's saying. Amen. Amen. The, these churches, they, they were being tempted to follow they were being tempted to follow after those that were claiming that the atoning work of Jesus Christ was not entirely yeah. sufficient. That's right. Mm -hmm. And that is a very, very slippery slope that we can find ourselves in today. Um, that some would say, you mean to tell me, uh, gentlemen, that I place my faith unequivocally, totally, in Jesus Christ, in his person, and his performance That's on right. Calvary. And that is all I have to do. That is Absolutely. what we're saying. That we Praise cannot add anything Amen. to that. And, and to uh, Pastor, I think as Americans, we've been conditioned. If something's too good to be true, it probably, probably is. is. Right. That's right. it. I think we have that in our human nature running in our back, background of our minds. Well, here's mm. something so good. This is the best news ever. That's right. Yeah. Amen. That's Amen. It. You're this right. Is this is the best. The gospel is the good news. That's it. The best Amen. news ever. Amen. This, is, this is why we go to the jails. This is why we become pastors. Sure. This is why we do what we do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because it's the good news. It Amen. is. Amen. It's good right. news. You do it out of that place of gratitude, not yeah. duty. For what he did, not what we did. What he did. That's and right. And you know, Paul, Paul refers back to the crucifixion. He's always pointing back to the cross. That's it. 
And, and, and if you ever need an example of, of a man who, who couldn't do anything for himself, you think about the thief on the cross. That's it. You know, uh, he had no options. Yeah. He was literally bleeding out. He was dying. That's he was good. gasping yeah. his last breaths. He could do nothing for Jesus That's good stuff. at all. Amen. And he said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, this day, That's it, you'll brother. be with me in That's paradise. That's good stuff. Amen. All it took yes. was Amen. him putting his faith in Jesus. Amen. He saw him dying there. He knew he was innocent. He knew he was righteous. And he said, this, this man is the son of God. Yes. And I'm putting all my faith in him. Amen. And he said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. That's salvation. He didn't have to be baptized. He didn't have to pay his tithes. He didn't have to attend church. He didn't have to do anything except put his faith in Jesus. Yes, Amen. Yes, I like yes. that, brother. When, Amen. When he, when, he, when he ran out of options, business picked up. That is the way we are. When yeah, we get right. to the place in our life that Amen. we run out of options that's right. and we can look to the Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. then, then and then alone the Holy Spirit says, okay, now watch me go to work. Amen. It makes Amen. me wonder how often it is that God brings us to a point where we were out of options. Yeah. yeah. And you know what, um, guys, we cannot we cannot corral this at just the salvation experience no. alone. Right. right. We've got to run out of options every day. Amen. Every Amen. day I need the every yes. hour, every hour yes. I need yes. the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Yes. And when Amen. I wake up, I really need to train myself to get out of bed having run out of options That's right. mm. other than the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ and Amen. his finished work. Yes. He should Amen. be our first resort. Um, last resort, he should be our first resort. Amen. Amen. Mm. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. I, I just will mention this, mention this right quick, and we're, I'm, I'm not trying to take us into another book of the Bible, uh, but uh, in Acts chapter 15, uh, concerning this, issue with uh, law and, and works. Um, the, the Bible says, And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren, and, and they said this. This is what they were teaching uh, uh, back during that time. And certain men which were came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. And that the point being here, when therefore Paul when therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation. Right. That is concerning the Jerusalem council. And they was a, uh, for lack of better words, they was a big deal. Yeah. Wasn't they, Brother Jeff, yeah. when, when, when James and all of those uh, folks from the church at Jerusalem came together and, and from uh, those at Antioch and that went and so... Somebody might say, well, you know, this, ain't no, this is not a big deal. Yes, it is. Oh, yes, it, is. it is a very big deal. When you add anything, <clears throat> when you add anything, <coughs> excuse me, when you add anything to God's recipe, you ruin it. Amen. Yep. If your mama makes good biscuits, <laughs> and nobody makes biscuits like mama, you cannot go in the kitchen and tell her to add a little bit more of this right. and a little bit more of that. What happens is you mess up the biscuits. Mm -hmm. and, and I know that's, that's kind of comical, but that is the way it is with the finished work of the Lord right. Jesus yes. Christ. Amen. If I lay my hand on it whatsoever mm. to change it that's or right. add to it, yeah. I make it ineffective. Amen. That's exactly right. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, verse number two. It says, This only would I learn of you. He's fixing to ask them a question. Mm -hmm. He said, Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Who'd like to comment first on that? I see here um, <clears throat> basically righteousness revealed. By grace through faith. I mean, this here, it's, it's, it's all about receiving the Spirit. And 
uh, a parallel passage that, that really spoke to me, Ephesians chapter 1, mm -hmm. verses, and verses uh, 13 to 14. This is basically the order of operation mm. of salvation. It says, whom, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, you were sealed. Yes. Yes. Amen. With the Holy Spirit of promise. Woo. Which Hallelujah. Is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Amen. That's Amen. also your eternal security verse. Yes. That's mm -hmm. right. You were sealed. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. There's a, um, uh, there's a little story I'll share quickly uh, from one of my Bible uh, college professors. you talking about um, being sealed. Uh, until the day of redemption, uh, he made a um, uh, illustration of, of uh, tomatoes. Uh, when when she canned those tomatoes, there was not a good seal mm. on the on them. And in the middle of the night, she had placed those jars under their bed. Mm. And in the middle of the night, them them jars started going boom, boom. And it, it was really comical to hear him say it, but my point is, my point is, there was contamination that was able to get in that jar. Come on now. That's good. And cause them to blow their lid. Right, right. And there is no way, there is no way to be sealed outside Woo. of the Lord Jesus Christ That's and his finished right work. There, yeah. and, and, and as long as we are sealed in him, mm. we are sealed mm. until yeah. the day of redemption. Right. It does not yeah. matter if it's 10 years, 20 years, or ever how long your lifespan is. That's if right. we will receive and accept the pure gospel the Holy Ghost yes. puts the seal on it, That's right. and there is no condemnation. Amen. There's no corruption that can get in. There's nothing that can happen to God's child that places their faith totally in Him. That's Amen. exactly right. Amen, Amen. Amen. preacher. Amen. He's the basically Lord. asking them, did, did you receive the Holy Spirit by adding law to grace? Right. Mm -hmm. Or did you receive the Holy Spirit by trusting Christ right. and what He did on the cross? Which one did you do? Mm. You know, he's being blunt as a spoon right here. Mm. You know, he's, which one Which one is it, guys? Because we know that the way it's right. And they did, too. That's why Paul is so indignant, is they mm. knew, too. But they got contaminated, preacher. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Mm. Amen. Brother Darrell? Yep. The Hebrew version of it is, uh, I want to know, it's Paul speaking now, asking a question. I want to know from you just this one thing. Did you receive the Spirit by a legalistic observance of Torah commands or by trusting in what you heard and being faithful to it? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the point. He just won't ask the question. Yeah, amen. And, amen. and then it goes on, <laughs> verse 3, are you that stupid? <laughs> you know, I mean, he's, he's blunt about it. He asks questions. He is. He's being blunt. But he's being, he is, he is furthering the gospel. It's not an arrogant blunt. No, it's not. But it's a serious blunt. Yeah. It's and, and a the, very, very serious thing. And the reason thing. being is because when you, when you allow contamination uh, in your faith, when you take your faith and you place it anywhere but the finished work, work of Christ, you cut off or t tie up the hands of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. He cannot yeah. work. He cannot work. And, and yeah. who, wants to, who wants to walk in this life without the Holy Spirit's Amen. guidance, wisdom, Amen. help, encouragement, strength, peace, joy? Who wants to do that? You have no clear spiritual discernment without Him. You have no clear guidance without the Holy Spirit. You ha everything becomes suspect. Mm. That's right. That, that is one of the reasons, too, gentlemen, that that Christians can't live for God. That's right. Well, I, I don't know about y'all, but I have to have the Holy Ghost yes. to keep me in line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just to, just to be a decent human being, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I have to have the Holy Spirit to keep me in line. That's right. And if, if I place my faith in everything I do, mm -hmm. then I have tied the Holy Spirit's hands because the Holy Spirit, again, works within the parameters of the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ right. and my faith in it. Yeah. 
And uh, I, I believe this verse not only speaks of regeneration, I, I believe this verse speaks of our sanctification process. Absolutely. Uh, the gifts of the Spirit, so on and so forth. Because uh, anything that a church does or tries to get or a church member by works is contaminated. Yeah. It's contaminated. And going back to last week's study, that, that, frustrates, the, that frustrates the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's Amen. Right. Amen. I have a word about faith. Uh, sure. You know, a parallel passage to... Uh, the last part of verse 2 is Romans 10, 17. So yeah. then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. And some of you might be asked, saying, if you've come across this video, uh, some of you might be asked, why don't you don't have the faith? Mm. My faith is weak. It only takes a mustard seed of faith. Yeah. But everybody, God gave every man of scripture. What I read in the scripture That's tonight, right. correct me if I'm wrong, fact yeah. check me here. Yep. A measure. state that God gives every man the measure of faith. The measure. Every man. Yeah. Right. So what are you placing your faith in? Right. You have to redirect your faith into Christ. what Jesus Christ Amen. did on the cross. Amen. Period. Yeah, even, right? even, yeah, right. even atheists are ag yeah, even atheists are agnostic. Yeah. It takes more they faith, have faith in that <laughs> to, than it does to believe in the Lord Jesus that's Christ for exactly him right crucified. There. But right. they can redirect. We, yeah. we they can redirect. Yeah. Oh yeah. So that's what you do. Have that's to right. Do. And and as you as you say, brother, it is not. You spoke of that mustard seed. Mm. It is not the amount. That's right. It's that's the right. object. That's, that's right. right. It's the object of our yes. faith. And mm -hmm. many people say, like you said, I don't, I don't have much faith. Well, uh, that measure or whatever God has given you, you place it. You place what little bit you yeah. got. You place what little bit you got mm -hmm. in Jesus Christ and his finished mm -hmm. work, and I'll guarantee you it'll blossom. Yes. That's right. It'll go to work. It sure will. Amen. Yep. Amen. Yes. All right. Any other comments? And I think, uh, mm. guys, verse 3 is like a follow-up question. It is. Uh, I believe. Uh, yeah, it is. It says, uh, are ye so foolish, question mark, having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect? By the flesh? Well, pa Paul wasn't speaking of perfection. Yeah. He was speaking of completeness. Right. Uh, mm. the, the, Maturity. The Greek word yes. there is epitaleo, which is the completeness to bring something <laughs> to a place where it is complete. Yeah. And it's a, it's a foolish thought. Mm. It's a foolish thought, which is why he said he keeps calling them foolish. It's a foolish thought that we can add anything mm. to Christ's finished work. And make it more complete. Christ did what he did. And he, when he said it was finished. It was finished. It was complete. It was right. epitaleo. Yeah, right. It was perfect. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. And I think too. You know. Uh, Jeff you mentioned this several times. That uh, this is not only about. Our, our salvation. But it's about our sanctification. And he, lay, he makes that very clear here. He said you began in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. You began in, in a, a perfect faith, a mature faith, honestly, is what it was, because, yeah. you know, that just that little bit of faith in Christ. Right. The object of his faith was, was Jesus, and, and that's how they began. But now they're trying to live out this Christian life in the flesh. And I really think that speaks to our tendency as believers, it as is. men, as, as being living in this flesh, our tendency is... To put our faith in our flesh. Absolutely. Our tendency is to wander away from the faith that we first placed in Jesus Christ. And um, I, I just couldn't help but think as I was studying this of a song, um, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a lot of churches I've noticed in the hymn books, they've changed the words on this to make it a little less offensive because it really tells the truth about who we are. Listen to this. It says this. It says, O to grace, how great a debtor. Daily, I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Mm -hmm. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord. Take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. And I believe there's a lot of truth in that hymn. Amen. Amen. And our hearts tend to wander. Our hearts tend to go down that path of, you know, I'm going to do a little more and, and God will approve of me. Mm. And, and listen, God loves you 
with an unconditional love. Yes, he does. He doesn't love you based on who you are, based on what you've done, what your potential is for the kingdom of God. None of that. He loves you simply because he's chosen to place his love on you. Amen. And there's nothing you can do that would make God love you any more. And there's nothing you could ever do that would make God love you any less. That's right. Yeah. Amen. And, and, you know, our, our heart tends to wander from the faith in Christ. But we've got to keep it focused and keep redirecting that faith back to Jesus Christ. Amen. And it's a battle with our flesh. As long as we live in this flesh, we're going to fight that battle. Amen. We've, we've been taught that our whole life, though. Our whole life we've been put on a performance basis. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. From childhood through school, you get graded on how well you do. And we've been conditioned. Society has conditioned us that we have to perform. We have to... And we, we bring that into our relationship with Christ. And it, it, it really is baggage, spiritual baggage. But we bring it into our relationship with Christ. And I had this saying, if I could just stay busy enough, I won't sin. Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. Isn't that a foolish way of thinking? Mm -hmm. that's, that's no different than what the Galatians were doing. Yes, we, uh, I know uh, as pastors and preachers, we, we run into people all the time that um, that young babes in Christ that will um, give their heart and life to the Lord, and I've I've actually seen and heard young Christians fall away from the things of the Lord, and their and their reason behind it. When I would question them, they would say, "It's too hard," and. There was, there was a time, Brother Jeff, in my life, yeah. years ago, I would have told them, well, what you need to do is try harder. Yeah. I would have said that. Me too. Right. And I would have said, you just need to do this and, right. and do that. And maybe mm -hmm. we need to, uh, you, what you need to do is get in the choir, yeah. you know, and, and yeah. just wh whatever, oh, you know, yeah, lo right. lo load, load them up. Right. And, and that is completely wrong. That's completely wrong teaching. What we should be enforcing these babes in Christ is the simplicity of the gospel. Amen. Enforcing to that, mm -hmm. uh, that, that they're not only mm -hmm. saved by grace, they live their entirety of yes. their life Amen. by grace. Absolutely. The entire, day after day after day, it is God's grace that we need in God's grace flowing in our life. And grace flows again. Grace only flows from the cross. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. When they say it's too hard, you say, that's right, it's too hard. That's it. That's why we that's need the Holy Spirit. That's it. That's why we surrender to him and say, live through me. That's mm. it. Amen. That's, that's it. Right. Amen. I mean, Paul experienced it himself in Romans 7. You know, he, he always talked about these things, all these things I'm supposed to be doing. Those are things I don't do. And all this right. stuff I shouldn't be doing, that's the stuff I end up doing. That's it. But praise be unto God. He said, but there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. In Christ Jesus Amen. in Amen. them. That's it. That's the, that's the key. Yes. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Mm. Any more comments before verse 4? We're about out of, about out of time. Mm. The, the word says uh, in verse 4, Have you suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? It says, it says you have suffered persecution mm. because of your acceptance of Christ. Right. Don't throw it away. In, est in essence, saying, I trust it is not in vain. In essence, this is what Paul is saying. Everything that they've been through, um, uh, he trusts that it's not been in vain. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he would go on to say in verse 5, and we're kind of cutting across the field, uh, he, theref he therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith. Mm. Man, what a statement to mm. end with. Yeah. Mm. Law works cannot impart the Holy Spirit. Law works cannot bring us to maturity. Mm -hmm. And law works cannot work miracles. It is, it is 
totally and completely by the hearing and believing of faith. Amen. And there is only one faith in the Bible. Mm. There's only one faith. It is the faith. Amen. And it is faith in the Lord Jesus Christ yes. and his finished work. Yeah. Any other closing comments? Verse 4, real quickly, uh, having, he asked him, Have you suffered so many things in vain? What you have to remember is uh, a lot of these Jews converted to the way or to Christ. Um, they, were, they were severely persecuted, stoned. Even Paul himself, it speaks of it in uh, Acts chapter um, 14, 14 yep. how Paul was stoned uh, because of converting. These folks suffered for their faith, yeah. and now they're just throwing it away. Amen. Yeah, that's mm. a good point. Mm. Good point. All right. Well, it's, it's been very, very good, and we've got just a, just a few minutes left. Um, and we usually take this time to uh, invite someone to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. This, uh, this Bible study, um, as we've said before, uh, the broadcast started, we... Uh, we don't claim to be experts uh, by any means. Uh, I don't. Uh, we often learn more uh, from each other than sometimes I feel like I, I, I'm being taught more than I teach, which is that's good. Uh, and I appreciate these men. I appreciate them uh, coming tonight. Uh, and we, we want to ask you in, in parting tonight, if you've never had the opportunity uh, to... Call on the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, it's just as simple as saying, Jesus, I need you. I mean, it's not a, it's not a long, drawn-out formula. As a matter of fact, um, I, I believe if we're not careful, we can, we can try to add some of these works in our initial mm -hmm. prayer. Absolutely. You know, we can, we can get, you know, Jesus, as Brother Jeff said, Jesus will take you just the way you are. Amen. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved Amen. Amen. and uh, if you don't know him tonight um, call upon him you can just call upon his name yes. uh, I could say a prayer for you but that won't do it uh, you just call upon him yourself Amen. you understand the condition that you are in without him he knows where you are he knows your heart mm -hmm. and you just call upon him and I wanted to add this also maybe you're a believer uh, that's been struggling the entirety of your Christian life. Maybe you have a uh, something uh, in your the the, the so-called closet of your mind, uh, of your heart uh, that you've been dealing with, and you you love the Lord with all your heart, and and you're working yourself to death uh, in your Christian experience, trying to overcome sin in your life, trying to overcome. Uh, the things of the world, the things of the flesh, and the things of the, the, the devil. Mm. Uh, brother or sister, if that's you tonight, it's the same, it's the same recipe for everything. Yes, it is. Put your faith. Lay all of that trust in what you've been doing. Lay all of that trust in, uh, and I'm not downing denominations at all, but, but if you're trusting in your denomination, if your denomination is your salvation, you're, you're inviting failure. Lay that to the side and put your trust unequivocally and totally. And as, as Brother Jeff was saying, just throw out all the other options. As the thief on the cross, Amen. he ran out of options. You just throw all of these other things out Amen. and place your faith in the Lord Jesus right. Christ and his finished work. Amen. And the Holy Spirit, that Amen. besetting, it may be a besetting sin, that sin Amen. that is dominating Amen. your life. When you place your faith in him, hallelujah, Amen. the Holy Spirit can then go in and he can do what only the Holy Spirit can do because Amen. the Holy Spirit is God. Mm -hmm. And he can do a mighty, mighty work yes. in Amen. your life. Amen. We love you. We're going to say a closing prayer. Amen. Gentlemen, any closing comments? Anything before we pray? Uh, one th quick thing. If you're trying, as these Galatians, by work, adding it to grace, remember the words of Jesus. He'll let you work and he'll laugh at your calamity. Not my words, it's in the Bible. But he said these words, this is a promise from the Lord Jesus. Come to me, you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. That, that holds a whole new, gives like a whole new meaning to that verse. Yeah. Because 
you know, most of us try to live our Christian life on works. Yeah. Yeah. But all you have to do yeah. is rest yeah. in Jesus. Amen. 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 Yep. Amen. Praise the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you, Lord. we come to you in the name of Jesus. Yes, we come to you, Father. We approach you in his name, Lord, and by the blood of his eternal sacrifice. Father, we thank you for your son. We thank you, Lord, for your uh, effective work. It's, it's, it's done. It's finished. It's complete. Uh, and we can rest in it. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, we pray for that lost soul that may find this broadcast uh, either tonight or maybe down the road. Lord, we pray for, the, for that person that is putting their trust in you tonight. And they can be completely renewed, born again. Uh, by the Spirit of God, yes. Lord, we pray for that person, and also, Lord, we pray for that that weary Christian that yes. uh, that have been that have been working themselves to death mm. trying to live for God. Yes. Lord, we pray for them. Lord, we pray for your church. Yes. Lord, we're not down on the church. Lord, we we're not uh, any kind of derogatory. Uh, thoughts or comments, Lord, because the church is not a building. The church is not a series of buildings. The church is the is your people. Yes. We are the church. We mm-hmm. are your yes, bride. You are the head. We are the body. Lord, we love you. And we thank you, Lord, that you're coming again one of these days yes, after, you. Lord, your bride. Lord, we love you. And we thank you for that. Lord, bless this broadcast. Lord, continue to bless these men in their walk with Christ. Lord, continue to bless their families. And Lord, just have your will and way. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you again. We'll see you, Lord willing, next Tuesday night. Bye-bye. Praise God. Amen.